Welcome back students to our chapter 4 chemistry 1510 video lecture. In this video we're going to be talking about titration. So when we look at a titration this is just a different setup for a chemical reaction. It's two solutions that contain things that react with one another. And so this is one of the big ways where we use molarity. What you're going to find in a general titration is down here you're going to have your Erlenmeyer flask and in your Erlenmeyer flask is going to tend to be your acid. And then you'll have your burette on top and inside your burette will be your base. So the reason that we do this is because we can measure the acid in the Erlenmeyer flask and then using the burette we can measure how much base was delivered. And when this reaction happens we use something called a chemical indicator. We mix it in with the acid. And that chemical indicator is going to tell us when to stop titrating. And this is what's called the end point. So this is when to stop titrating. That means when do you stop adding the base to the acid? This is going to be indicated by a color change. Typically, we use something called phenolphthalein in order to illustrate when to stop adding the base. Phenolphthalein turns a little bit pink uh, when it encounters base and so when this solution down here in your Erlenmeyer flasks turns just the slightest little bit of pink you know that it's time to stop adding your base and actually at that point you've added more base than you should have because really what we want to do is get to the equivalence point this is when the base is neutralized by the acid. This would be where you don't have extra of anything, right? Where both of them are in a perfect proportion to neutralize each other. And the thing is, this happens at pH of 7. And when we look at what's easiest for us to do for a titration, it's much easier to add a couple drops of phenolphthalein to your Erlenmeyer flask and then just have a very faint pink and assume that the end point is close enough to the equivalence point. It's why in lab what will end up happening is when you get hot pink or magenta, you've gone too far. You have to just throw out that data and it's awful, but it's going to happen. So let's talk about how molarity is going to be used in these types of calculations. So remember that molarity was something maybe like uh, 0.5 capital M. When we write 0.5 capital M, what we really mean is there are 0.5 moles of whatever, solute, let's use NaOH, in one liter of NaOH solution. And we can write this now as a conversion factor because it has a two-part unit. But we can also take this and we can flip so that we have one liter on the top and the 0 0.5 moles on the bottom and we use what's convenient. And by convenient I mean we use what cancels our units. So let's look at the first step of most titration problems. The hardest part for a titration problem is to know where to start. So what you're going to do is look for the molarity and the volume of a single compound. Because remember, if molarity is moles over liters and you have a volume, then you can multiply those and just get moles. So for example, if you have 25 milliliters of the 0 0.5 
molar NaOH solution from the prior uh, part up there, then you would take your zero, well, here, we'll practice metric. You'll take your 25 milliliters, convert it to liters, and then you can take that and use the molarity and say, okay, my molarity can be written as either this or this. What do I use to cancel my units? And so in this case, we'd use the top one so that our liters end up canceling. And then we would get our moles on the top. So then when we have moles, it turns into a kind of typical stoichiometry problem. So we've seen how to use molarity uh, and the volume to get into moles. And we've seen up here how to use molarity as a two-part conversion. So let's look at a typical problem. So here is a typical titration problem. It asks you how many milliliters, right? So we're searching for the volume of NaOH will be required to neutralize 25 milliliters of 1.75 molar HCl. So let's talk about why I emphasized the of. The of links those two numbers. So many times you're used to having a problem where you have one given and you know that's where you're starting. In this case, there are three components and you need to figure out where to start. So I want to set this up in such a way that we can kind of make sense of where all our numbers are coming from. So we know we have 25 milliliters of HCl, and I'm going to use proper significant figures here, and 1.75 molar for the molarity of HCl. We also know that we have 0.5 molar I'm going to put that in one, move that real quick, 0.5 molar NaOH, and we don't know the volume. Now, the problem is when I make this little list, you can really start to see why folks want to use the dilution equation for this. But the dilution equation isn't going to work because your units don't cancel. You can't cancel NaOH with HCl without some kind of mole ratio. So speaking of mole ratios, let's real quick confirm that this equation is already balanced. So when we start to do a titration problem, we need to use this idea to get into moles first. So this idea said find the compound where you have the two, of, uh, two numbers for that same compound. You have the volume, you have the molarity. So we're going to take our molarity and our volume and we're going to multiply them. So the question is, can you do the dividing by 1,000 in your head? So let's see. We're going to go over 1 and 2 and 3. So 0 0.02500, and yes, those zeros are significant, liters of HCl is our starting point. So once you have your liters of HCl, you can start to use your molarity. Remember that your molarity of 1.75 molar was really a hidden two-part conversion factor. You want the liters on the bottom, so you need to have your conversion factor written like this. Once you get to this point, it's going to kind of finish more, well, at least in the middle, have a similar step to Chapter 3 stuff. Now you get got to get from moles of HCl to moles of NaOH. So... Your balanced chemical equation says one mole of HCl to one mole of NaOH. And let's talk about what the question wanted. The question wanted a volume. It wanted the milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Well, we have moles of sodium hydroxide and we also have molarity. So if we want to get to liters or milliliters, we can take our sodium hydroxide, 0.5 molar, and use that as our two-part conversion, where we have moles of sodium hydroxide are equivalent to one liter of sodium hydroxide. So you can stop here if you want and then do the liters to milliliters in your head, which is what I'm going to do. So when I stop here, I get 
0.0875 liters of sodium hydroxide, which I know is going to turn into 87.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide after I do uh, the metric conversion in my head. So let's real quick stop and talk about significant figures. With our final answer, you'll see I wrote three sig figs. That is because if I look at each individual term, here I had four sig figs, here I had three sig figs, here I have infinite sig figs, and here I have three sig figs. So the three significant figures limits you. Remember that the one liter here, that doesn't count towards significant figures, right? It's the measured part that I'm underlining in red here that ends up counting. So I got one more problem that you can give a try. It's a little bit harder. The reason this one is a little bit harder is because you have to use your new metathesis knowledge and your nomenclature knowledge to start with a balanced chemical equation. So what I want you to do is pause for a moment and try that balanced chemical equation. See how you're doing with your metathesis. And then unpause when you're ready. All right, welcome back after pausing. I hope you gave that a try. This problem's a lot harder because you needed to come up with this first and then you also needed to balance it. So your first step was to write the chemical equation your step two was to balance. Then it's time to solve your titration problem. So when you look at this titration problem, here it says you have 50 milliliters of 0.5 molar KOH, and you um, use 125 milliliters of sulfuric acid solution to neutralize. And it's asking you what the concentration is of the sulfuric acid solution. So we're going to start with the uh, KOH in this example because that's what we have two numbers for. We need a molarity and a volume to start. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly put the milliliters into liters in my head. And then I'm going to use my molarity of KOH as a two-part conversion factor. So I can take the 0. 0.5000 capital M, and remember that that capital M really stands for moles per one liter. And then I can double check to make sure that my liters are canceling, and they are. Now that I'm in moles of KOH, I need to get to moles of H2SO4. So for that, I'm going to use my balanced chemical equation. So two moles of KOH. end up being required for one mole of H2SO4. So at this point, we have a moles of H2SO4. How I like to end and how you like to end are not the same thing. Most of the time, students prefer to end here, get the moles of H2SO4, and then find the molarity by taking whatever they just solved for up here putting it in the top of our molarity equation, and then dividing by the 0.125 liters of H2SO4. I think that that's a lot of extra writing when all I really need to do is to put in one more conversion factor, and it, the reason students don't like it is because it feels a little weird. It feels a little weird because there's nothing on top. There's just a one. You're just dividing by a volume. Because remember, what we want is our moles of potassium hydroxide to cancel, and we want a concentration of sulfuric acid. Concentration means molarity, moles per liter. And so here, once we've canceled out our units, notice how I have a moles and on the bottom of the next term, a liter. So I have successfully, without doing this extra work over here, that I'm going to erase because I don't like extra work, I've successfully came up with a final answer. And that's it. 
double check your sig figs really quick. Go through and say I've got four sig figs, four sig figs, infinite sig figs, and oh gosh, five sig figs. And you'll see why my answer has four significant figures. So that's enough of titration. Uh, we'll do a little bit of practice on next class. This is Katoni signing out.